Greetings, everyone. Today we're going to talk about logical fallacies. So what is a fallacy? A fallacy is a falsehood. Therefore, a logical fallacy is an argument that makes no sense within a given situation because it subverts the argument and the interpretation. Therefore, it offers cheap and unethical ways of winning a debate. There are different types of logical fallacies and we will not be able to talk about all of them in this video, but we will try to cover some of the most common logical fallacies, which are the ad hominem, false dilemma, the appeal to ignorance, slippery slope, circular argument, hasty generalizations, red herring, post hoc, ergo propter hoc, appeal to authority, bandwagon, and personal incredulity. So let's start with the first one. Ad hominem fallacy. An ad hominem fallacy is an argument that is aimed at the character of the person rather than focusing on the quality of that person's reasoning or performance. Therefore, it is an attack on the person or a group of, of people. And that is done to draw attention away from the important issue of the debate and focus instead on the character of the person. Let's look at an example. Candidate X is claiming he will help balance the town's budget and clear any outstanding debts if voted into office as mayor. However, Candidate X is dishonest, a dirty politician who can't even balance his own personal budget. His finances are in shambles. Do we really want someone like that running our town? Therefore, Candidate X should not be voted into office. Well, let's talk about this example. So, Candidate X is a candidate for a political office position. Therefore, it has nothing to do with the candidate's personal life. And because of that, it is considered a logical fallacy. Because instead of focusing on the person's performance, the arguer is directing the attention of the audience towards personal issues. So it's an attack on the person. The next type of fallacy is the false dilemma fallacy. The false dilemma fallacy is also called an either or fallacy or a black and white fallacy because it sets up only two choices in a complex situation, well, while in reality, there are more than two choices. Therefore, this type of fallacy, the false dilemma fallacy, oversimplifies the issue by claiming that there are only two options. Think, for example, uh, the famous slogan, love it or leave it. In this case, we're giving only two options, while in reality, probably the person could even try to stay and work with the challenges. So that's an example of a false dilemma fallacy. Let's look at another one. Since there is nothing good on television tonight, I will just have to go to bed. Well, yes. It's one thing if you want to go to bed, and it's something else that you're going to bed only because there is nothing on TV. Because if you want to do something else, you could read a book, or you could spend some time with a family, or visit a friend, or a family member, and so on. Therefore, the arguer is giving only two options, and that is a false illusion. That, therefore, we call it a false dilemma, black and white, or either or fallacy.
The next type of fallacy is the appeal to ignorance fallacy. And in this case, the person believes that his or her conclusion is true only because he or she has not been presented with evidence that shows it different. So let's look at this example. The suspect is clearly guilty because he has not yet proven his innocence. Okay, but have we tried to look at the evidence that the suspect is presenting? So therefore, that is considered an appeal to ignorance, and that's a fallacy. Another type of fallacy is the slippery slope fallacy. In this case, the error is based on the fear that once a move is made in one direction, we will necessarily have to continue to slide in that direction. So while one action may in fact lead to some actions, similar actions, the slippery slope fallacy appeals to the fear by claiming that a certain moderate action will lead to more extreme actions, okay? So let's look at an example. Increasing gun regulations is the first step toward the government completely disarming American citizens. Okay, the fact that we are increasing gun regulations does not necessarily mean that we're taking away the guns from the citizens. Therefore, this is an exaggeration and this is called a slippery slope because one action is not going to necessarily influence another action or another result. Let's look at another type of fallacy, circular argument fallacy. In this type of cases, the circular argument relies on the issue that some premises lead to a conclusion. Therefore, the conclusion leads back to the premise. In this case, the arguer just goes in circles around and around and around and doesn't really make a clear point. Let's look at this example. You say that your friend Jesse lies all the time, and you know this because they never tell the truth. But your argument that Jesse lies all the time and your premise because they never tell the truth are the same thing. Therefore, this is a circular argument and it's a logical fallacy. Next type of logical fallacy that we will talk about is the hasty generalization fallacy. In this case, it draws the conclusion based on too little evidence, insufficient evidence. This intellectual habit often surfaces in arguments about gender, race, age, sexual orientation, and even vocation. So let's look at an example. Since I moved into this neighborhood, I've seen three police cars in six months. There must be more crime in this area than I had originally thought. Well, the fact that you've seen three police cars in six months in that neighborhood, this does not necessarily mean that that's a dangerous neighborhood. Probably there are police officers living in your neighborhood or po probably there was an activity or that they have attended. So the possibilities are many. Therefore, the argument relies on hasty generalizations and it is not a strong argument. It is a logical fallacy. Let's look at the next type of fallacy. This is called a red herring fallacy. The red herring fallacies are deliberate attempts to change the subject. So instead of dealing with the actual argument, the arguer actually introduces irrelevant points to distract the audience. 
The origin of the name comes from the practice of using red herring because of the smell of the fish. Because in reality, there is no red herring. But when the herring is let to dry, it takes this reddish color. But the attention goes on to the smell of the fish that distracts dogs from the scent that they are supposed to uh, be tracking. Therefore, this type of fallacy is aimed at diverting the attention from the real issue. This type of fallacy is commonly used in politics, unfortunately. Let's look at this example. So we have a debate between the moderator and Senator A. Senator A, can you explain why you voted for higher taxes on the middle class? And Senator A replies, that never happened. But I do propose an increase in funding for social programs aimed at helping low-income families. Let me explain. So what happens here? The moderator is asking a question about why the senator has voted for raising taxes for the middle class. And the senator, instead of answering the question about the high taxes on middle class, he switches, he diverts the attention, he distracts and leads his audience onto a different issue, which is funding for social programs, which could be an issue, but in this case, the senator is not answering the question. Therefore, that is considered a red herring. Another type of fallacy is the post hoc ergo propter hoc fallacy. This term comes from Latin and it means this after, therefore, because of this, which means that the fallacy rests in assuming that because A precedes B in time, A causes B, which means action one causes action B. However, this is done only to confuse the audience because the arguer is actually confusing the sequence with the cause. Let's look at an example. My neighbor's son plays a lot of violent video games. I've also heard he gets into fights at school. The video games must cause him to be violent. Well, the first action that happens is the boy playing video games. The second action is the boy gets into fights at school. However, the fact that the boy watches video games or plays video games does not necessarily mean that this is the cause for him getting into fights. He may be getting into fights because of many other reasons and not necessarily because of the violence that he sees in the video games. Another type of fallacy is the appeal to authority fallacy. In this case, it is assumed that an expert in one field is credible in any other field. However, let's look at this example. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Well, yes, a doctor is an expert in his or her field. However, even within the discipline of medicine, there are different types of specialties. Therefore, if somebody needs to have heart surgery, that person is not going to go to a dentist, but it is going to go to a cardiologist, right? So, Let's not confuse that appeal to authority does not always mean that that is a fallacy. We actually want to rely on appealing to authority. 
The only thing that we need to make sure is that the authority that we are using is indeed an expert in the area or use several other experts in the area to back up your claim. Using an expert from a different field would make it become a logical fallacy. Another type of fallacy is the bandwagon fallacy. So what is the bandwagon fallacy? Bandwagon arguments appeal to the emotions of a crowd, like in everyone is doing it, therefore you have to do it. So they invite people to accept something just because that is popular. We also refer to it as the herd mentality. So let's look at this example. Your young teenager comes to you and wants to get a tattoo. He or she argues that all the high school friends are doing it because some celebrity just got this new tattoo. However, whatever your belief or approach towards tattoos may be, it does not mean that the high schooler should get a tattoo just because a celebrity has done it and everybody is doing it. Therefore, we call it a bandwagon fallacy. The last type of fallacy that we're going to talk about today is the personal incredulity fallacy. And this happens when an argument is difficult to understand just because it is less likely to be true, which means I don't believe that this is true because I don't believe in that thing. Let's look at this example. Life on other planets. I don't believe that there is life on other planets. Therefore, the argument is wrong. And that is not true. That would be an example of logical fallacies. Now, we talked about the different types of logical fallacies, but you're going to say, how do I avoid using logical fallacies? Because sometimes it feels as if logical fallacies uh, are just part of our lives. So there are certain strategies that you could take. One, make sure that you stick to the point. Understand clearly the argument and stick to presenting that argument clearly. Do not try to deceive your listener because they're going to realize that. And use relevant evidence from relevant sources to back up your claims. Also, avoid any derogatory or misleading language. And that would be all for today. Thank you very much for your attention and see you next time. Bye-bye.